Welcome back to Studio 5. It's the ripple effect we didn't see coming. Experts say the COVID-19 pandemic has contributed to an unprecedented surge in eating disorders among adolescents. Studio 5 health contributor Mickey Eberhardt is joining me with the warning signs to watch for in your own kids. Important topic. I'm so glad you're taking it on. Um, experts referring to the recent events as the perfect storm for teens and eating disorders. Why is that? Yeah, it really is. You think about social um, isolation combined okay. with a uh, shift in the regular routine and activities and then it didn't take long for quarantine 15 memes to pop up which haha is funny but rooted in fat phobia and then we get messaging about you know covid may be worse and people that are i mean there's just all these things that came together with this surge in online wellness immunity fitness platforms during that time mm. it created the perfect storm i feel like all too often mickey and you know this as well as i do we hear about a woman or we know a woman who has struggled with this her whole life and is still battling the effects even when she's overcome it right. there's some there's some lingering effects so does early intervention make a big difference all the difference yeah and if you think about kind of this analogy of an eating disorder train that has a destination really to nowhere, but in worse circumstances, death, mm -hmm. if we can stop it when we're seeing things like packing bags and thinking about a destination and buying a ticket before they ever get on that train, mm. we can save a lot of heartache and problems before they're heading down the track. Before we get into warning signs, there are some myths. And I have to admit that even, I consider myself fairly educated as I get the chance to learn from yeah. experts like you on the regular. Some of these even caught me off guard. Myth number one, eating disorders are not about food. Right. And so there's kind of this pervasive belief that it's usually about, it's usually an outward manifestation of some turmoil that's going on. But the reality is, Brooke, is nowadays it's more about food than it's not. It's about food? Yeah, and that's because our teens are inundated with shots of bodies left and right, before and afters, look at this, look like this. And so that train usually starts with the belief that there's something wrong with my body mm. and we become obsessive about that and then it's hard to get off. So we no longer, I mean, we're still worried about these things, but in association, it's not poor self-esteem leads to this, leads to that, leads to this. It really becomes about the body and about how food affects the body. Correct, because they're starting in an effort to change how my body looks. Yeah. I'm going to eat a different way and that can lead to disordered behavior. All right, myth number two, people with eating disorders don't eat. They do. They do eat, just typically not enough or not enough variety. So starvation does not mean no food. Mm -hmm. It means not enough. I heard reference to the phrase disordered eating mm -hmm. a couple years ago and that stuck with me. Like we think of eating disorders as a certain act or a defined routine, but disordered eating, that could affect a lot more women than those who are holding themselves to a certain definition. Yes, and disordered eating is the pathway to an eating disorder. That's the train you're talking about, exactly. getting on the train. So that is those, when you see those behaviors, it's making changes rather than praising what's yeah. happening there. Here's another myth that might surprise people. It did me, healthy eating is always healthy eating. You say that's not true. I know, right? And this is the gray area because what this is saying is, okay, there's healthy foods and not healthy foods. And so there's healthy bodies and not healthy bodies. Usually we perceive that based on weight alone. And so when we see that, if my goal is to try and be healthier and I have to eat healthy, that's usually when I'm gonna start under eating or if I'm gonna cut out food groups. And so as a parent, when we hear a teen say, you know, I wanna try and eat healthier, I wanna eat clean, having a conversation right there. Where mm -hmm. is this coming from? So rather than seeing healthy eating as always good, great, right, right. this is a great thing. Where's it coming from? And what other things can we put in place besides letting them just run with I'm gonna eat healthy. So it's the what is it rooted in. Also the behaviors I would imagine around healthy eating. I had a girlfriend tell me she was at a banquet dinner and the woman next to her in, in pursuit of healthy eating yes. to not succumb to the dessert that was about to be put in front of her threw her fork on the floor. Cool. And my friend noticed this and said, what are you, what are you doing? I mean, we talk about behaviors around yeah. healthy eating. I'm sure that speaks to what you're saying too. Yeah. yeah, it's being able to, you know, if you feel so strongly about those kinds of things that in social environments, we have to succumb to things like right, this. Right, It's a little red flag. Uh, myth number four, eating disorders result from pre-existing trauma or mental illness. Yeah, so sometimes they do, but um, sometimes we see the, f it's kind of the chicken or the egg here. So sometimes we see, oh, they have anxiety or depression, so they don't want to eat. Where sometimes it's, 
the eating disorder is causing anxiety and depression to happen. So sometimes mm. the triggers of an eating disorder are actually the results of the starvation itself. Yeah. So being able to really get in and see what the cause of that is. That's a lot. That's right? a lot for parents to take in. Let's talk yeah. about some warning signs okay. when exercise becomes obsessive. Define obsessive. Yeah, so you know, typically teens, tweens were involved in activities, sports. They like to go. There's joy in movement. They can take a rest day if they're sick or tired. When it becomes obsessive, they no longer will take that rest. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they're injured, if they're not feeling great, by all means, I have to do this. They're gonna do Red it. Red flag. All right, if they have anxiety around eating. Yeah, so this is like, um, I can't eat certain things or regular favorites drop out of rotation. If they're avoiding eating with family and friends and trying to kind of get make excuses to get out of those situations with mm -hmm. eating. Under this umbrella, you point out eating rituals could start to pop up. What do you mean by yeah, eating Yeah, so rituals? sometimes with, um, if you're trying to eat less but keep it under the radar, um, one thing is like cutting things into lots of little pieces oh, on your okay. plate, eating yeah. a little bit, moving things around so it looks like you're eating, but really not a lot's going in. We're looking for changes in appearance? Yeah, so this is, um, obviously weight fluctuations sure. are going to be there, but even some swollen cheeks with, um, with swollen salivary glands, loss of hair, dry skin, dry hair, um, loss in menstruation cycles, um, a real sensitivity to cold can oh. be a, a sign as well, and just overall feeling faint or fatigue. And moodiness, which this is a hard one because I feel like any- Teenagers. Any, right, any troubling you know, issue we're looking for, whether it be depression or eating disorder, teens are moody. Right, and so this is one, this is a difference, Brooke, and parents have said this to me, and it's been a common thread, which I think is so interesting, is they lose the sparkle in their eye, and uh, they withdraw from wanting to be with friends or doing activities that they normally in the past have really enjoyed doing. And that's the shift in mood to watch out for. It makes me teary just kind of me saying too. that. Me too, you just pricked my heart with that, with that, with that uh, observation. Um, quickly, Mickey, in our final seconds together, if people see these warning signs, what's the first step? I would hate to say goodbye without leaving parents. Yeah, so I will put some resources on the site that are free resources geared towards parents that may think their teens may be in trouble in this regard. Getting in to see a therapist or a registered dietitian, both would be great that specialize in these types of body image, eating disorder, recovery. Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking on this important topic. Go to our website for those additional resources, promisestudio5.ksl.com. We'll be right back.